Perfect. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so um, we kind of gave an introduction. Should I go over that a little bit just now to, to re-explain? Yeah. Just the bullet points, maybe. Okay. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. No, don't be sorry. Thank you so much. No, no. Um, so basically the bullet points. We went into um, understanding Hasidus because the Tanya comes from Hasidus. We learned a bit about the person who brought Hasidus and his, his way of um, expressing into the world, which was bringing the, the heights from Shamaim down into this world and bringing absolute love and bringing um, this respect for each person in each um, in whatever stage, whatever state he's in, a Russia or a Tzaddik, right? That was what the Baal, the Baal Shem Tov brought down. Something that the Alter Rebbe, who is the third Rebbe of um, Hasidus, like since the Baal Shem Tov, he came down and he's the one who wrote the Tanya. And so these are the two great luminaries because they change the way we see everything. Um, the Baal Shem Tov, he brought down also the, the, the fact that we, are, we can now rejoice. We're in a different level in our relationship with Hashem. We're no longer toddlers who had to be taught in a severe way what not to do because it will hurt us. Just like you have to raise voice at a child, a toddler who's about to touch the hot it and burn himself so that was the relationship we had the relationship we have today said so the Baal Shem Tov back then is already we're like PhD levels like we're adults we can love Hashem we can do all these mitzvahs knowing how good it is for us knowing how much we can connect with him with our father so that's the that's what the Baal Shem Tov brought down what the Alter Rebbe gave to us is the understanding that um, first of all, the approach of Mila um, Muhevin, which was the opposite of the Baal Shem Tov. So from here, he's, he's, it's not all about miracles. It's not all about uh, big changes it's, and breaking nature. It's about using nature and elevating it so that naturally all the negativities go away. So that naturally we have that pure connection with Hashem and we elevate everything we go through. So that's the Alter Rebbe. And we talked about his name, his name being Yisra, his name being Shneor. So he he brought down two lights. He his his name represents the importance of having both Torah, Torah of the hidden and Torah of the secret, which is from they have their source in the like from the beginning of time where um, the Rebbe Shab explains in his book Eta Chaim that when Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil that was his sin and then we had the mixture of the bad and good in the world and that's what we're dealing with today so the Rebbe Rashab says it's not just that it's the fact that he didn't first eat from the tree of life because if he ate from the tree of life, then he would know how to deal with this, the, the, the mixture of good and evil. He would be able to see clearly. He would be able to feel clearly. He would be able to still connect with his neshama, his essence, and there would be no issues, right? So, so what is the tree of life today? is Hasidus, is Tanya, it's the secrets of the Torah. And this is the gift that um, this Alter Rebbe, whose name is Shneor Zalman, he brought down to us and we're so lucky. So the other thing about his name, um, about the essence of this Tzaddik, um, is that he, his name Zalman is Lizman, same words. And this idea of taking every moment that we're going through of time, the constraints of time, the constraints of the world, the constraints of nature, we're able to use every single moment to be elevated. Um, 
and and there's a lot of spirituality we talked about the amazing power behind it um and how the rebbe himself also said that with each moment what we want to be doing is to produce what do we want to produce what do we want to create with every moment we, we want to bring unity we want to produce love we want to produce unity and light and that's the power that we have um yeah so i think we'll we'll have you know we'll go on from here um knowing now the reason that we we spoke about all of this is because when you learn when you learn um a piece of torah you're connected with the neshama the essence of the person who wrote it so it's a big chus what we're doing today so the more that we're able to tap into the neshama who who wrote the tanya right the more that we have that right mind frame that that right um, energy and spiritual awareness. Yes. Am I frozen? Hello? Okay. Okay. Yes, you are frozen. Okay. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, we hear you, but we just can't see uh, movement. But we okay. see you. Perfect. That's all we need. Okay. So, um, the schus of being able to learn Tanya then is um, what we've learned from the Alter Rebbe is it's okay to be exactly as I am. It's okay to have faults and it's okay that I'm acting in ways that are not up to my standards, right? Because this is part of the world and the constraints that I live in, right? So already all the pretanya, we learned that we don't have to hold on to any pressure because naturally, organically, through learning and through doing these things, specifically, we're so lucky that Miriam's been able to learn and to teach um, her basic, her her CBTT, cognitive behavioral Torah therapy, through the Tanya, and so even more, we have more tools in our toolbox to help us to organically refine and change um, the way that we're expressing into the world, which is not to change who we are and not to change me. It's to reveal my essence, um, and that's what the Alter Rebbe is all about. So with this. Um, we might already start in chapter one of Tanya. I'm not sure how we're doing for time. Okay, I think we're still good. So we're one hour class. We have about 13 minutes left. Okay. So you know what? We might just learn the first little bit. Um, because there's actually still a lot to say. Um, I don't know if anyone's opened up to it. I can't share my screen, but I've sent a link onto the group chat for the text of the Tanya that's on Chabad.org. So I'm going to read from chapter one right now. Feel free to join, or to, to look it up and to read it out loud for yourself as well, because there's a lot of power with actually expressing the words of Torah. So, Tanya chapter one. It has been taught in the Gemara Nida, an oath is administered to him before birth, warning him, be righteous, don't be wicked. And even if the whole world tells you that you are righteous, you should regard yourself as if you are wicked. Um, this Let's just understand that a little bit first. So here we're learning that um, the, the Alter Rebbe says, and he's quoting the Gemara. He's not just saying this from Rosh HaKodesh. He's saying this is what the Gemara says. The Gemara says that before a neshama comes down, before a baby is born, right, his neshama exists. And his neshama in the womb, before, before he's, he's, he experiences his physical body, this neshama has awareness, total awareness. 
and this neshama is being talked to to a by a malach and this malach is saying to this neshama look you have to to you have a uh, you have to make an oath before you're able to go into the world. What's the oath? Swear that you're going to be righteous and that you're not going to be wicked. But then if people tell you that you're righteous, sh- even then you should still regard yourself as wicked. So that doesn't make sense. That's like two different opposing, contradicting statements that this malach is asking from the neshama, right? And this is something that you went through, that I went through. Every single person who's alive, this is what your neshama has gone through, and it remembers. Um, this requires to be understood, for it contradicts the Mishnahic dictum in Avot, in Pirkei Avot, which says, and be not wicked in your own estimation. Furthermore, says the Alter Rebbe, if a man considers himself to be wicked, he will be grieved at heart and depressed and will not be able to serve Hashem joyfully and with a contented heart. While if he is not perturbed by this self-appraisal, it may lead him to irreverence, God forbid. This is what the Alter Rebbe says. After he quoted the Gemara, he says, yeah, I see the same question that you see. This doesn't make sense and it has to be explained. Um, because it even contradicts what the Mishnah says in Pika Albert, uh, how, um, how we shouldn't think of ourselves as wicked. Because if we think of ourselves as wicked, then we'll feel bad and we'll feel depressed and we'll have a heavy heart and then we're not going to be able to serve Hashem joyfully and, and chas v'sham, it'll, it'll cause us all sorts of difficulties in our life. So why would the... Um, so the Alter Rebbe is saying, why would Hashem say something in one source and then say something else in another source, right? And then the then we're going to have the answer. We have like 10 minutes. Okay. So this answer will be understood after a whole discussion that we're going to go through. And we're not going to be able to touch on everything today. So here the Alter Rebbe says, we find in the Gemara five distinct types, a righteous man who prospers, a righteous man who suffers, a wicked man who prospers, and a wicked man who suffers. And then we also have an intermediate person who's known as the Ben Oni. Here it's explained that the righteous man who prospers, he is a perfect tzaddik. The righteous man who suffers he is an imperfect tzaddik. And in Raya Mehemna, in Parshat Mishpatim, it's explained that the righteous man who suffers is one, this is the righteous man who suffers is the imperfect tzaddik. He is a person whose evil nature is subservient to his good nature. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okay, I'm back. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so here the Alter Rebbe is saying that in regards to the imperfect tzaddik, in Parshas Mishpatim, there's a source um, that says, who is this imperfect tzaddik, a righteous man who suffers? What is What characterizes him as a, an imperfect tzaddik and not a tzaddik fully? is that he has an evil nature, but it's, um, but his good nature is dominant over it. So his evil nature listens to his good nature, let's say. I think for there, I think we should leave it there um, for today. Um, and I wanted to say in terms of what Miriam taught us from Tanya, from, from Hasidus is If we really want to be changed by what we're learning, it's a three-step process. This three-step process, and I'll talk about it again next time, 
the three step process is first of all, as much as we can to dub in. Dubbing is the first step. Why dubbing? Because when we dub in, we open the door to our neshama to enter. And I can explain more about everything behind that. The second step is to learn Torah. That's what we're doing with Tanya. We're putting in our minds the refined thoughts of the tree of life so that we can have this knowledge in our mind. And this knowledge in our mind, it nourishes our soul. So we've opened the door to Anashama, who's like a starving man and needs to be fed. Now we're teaching it, we're nourishing it, giving it food that it needs of the Torah. The next step that we need to do is to have um, to use our minds in contemplation and meditation. Why? Because, again, the Alter Rebbe taught us what we need to do is not just have thoughts in our mind. We can't just be a good person in our mind. We have to feel it in our heart. We have to change our heart. Because through a changed heart, and when I say changed, I don't really mean changed. I mean we have to uncover the true essence of our heart. So it's a process of refinement. So when we refine our heart, then we express into the world our truth. We, have, we give birth to holy emotions and we bring peace into the world. We're not angry all the time when something doesn't go the right way that we wanted. We have the wherewithal from a certain groundedness and our you know, feeling our neshama, our essence, to actually, like the Rebbe says, use every moment to bring yechidus and achdos and, and bring an elevation in that moment. So, so this step of refining our heart, having all the information in our mind coming down and refining our heart, there's a step that needs to be there. And if it's not done, then we'll be just like every other person who studied seven, ten years for a doctorate to be able to have, give surgery on heart patients and then right after that, go out and overeat and eat uh, like McDonald's or like over fried things or smoke after giving a patient a surgery for lung cancer. These things, these people, they learned a lot. They know a lot. But the issue is that their heart hasn't absorbed the information. And this is what meditation does. Meditation breaks down um, all the amazing nutrients of our um, wisdom of the stuff that we've learned and put in our mind and it works to process it and melt it down and mush it up so that it can be absorbed and refine the, the, the heart that lives there. So next week I can go a bit more into that but just with that in mind I would love if we could um, end off with a small meditation since we only have two minutes. <laughs> um, so I'll invite everyone to just join me do your best to breathe breathe out all impurities all negativities all negative thoughts and emotions that exist in you at the moment breathing in all the goodness and all the light and everything we've just learned so breathing in and breathing out And in once more, all the life that we've learned that's sitting there waiting to be absorbed into our hearts, breathing out. Okay. Now I'm picturing your mind's eye, these great luminaries of the Baal Shem Tov and of the Alter Rebbe, like two great shining stars and see all their light of the connection from Hashem down to, to us and the other one representing our connection in this world and elevating it to Hashem. Imagine these two lights and these two strengths coming to us, being absorbed into us. Feel yourself surrounded and embraced by this beautiful energy with joy and picture in your mind's eye, 
Picture you without any pressure, with absolute joy, with the feeling of expressing who you really are to yourself so you can trust yourself and respect and love yourself and for the sake of the people around you, for your loved ones, that they'll see you shining rather than battered. Now with this image of you acting and feeling the best you, you are, imagine this light just shining forth from you, this light of your neshama, of your essence of who you are and all the negativity being banished. Now Hashem, now let's just give a prayer. Now Hashem, please, with this image in our minds, burn it, engrave it into the groove, all the grooves of our mind, so that we shall be directed in our behavior to shine forth from our essence in every moment, Hashem. And may we have joy and feel Hashem's presence and share ba'achdus in every moment, the author of the Tanya. Yeah. Feeling this amazing strength and this light shining forth from you with absolute joy and softness and happiness. Open your eyes and feel your potential today and feel Hashem's presence and love shining through you. Beautiful. This is wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to hear that. What a schuss. It is amazing. Did you resonate with anything specifically? The idea of uncovering rather than changing was a wonderful um, approach. I was also speaking with a, um, a teacher, someone who runs a school this morning about discipline and many different things. And this just went right into that conversation about going mm -hmm. from that harshness to now we don't, we don't we're in a place of, of love, that loving relationship. Um, it's interesting that it came about at the time of the Baal Shem Tov because it's for some reason just spreading out now. It's just now catching on as an approach in, in many places. So maybe those well springs are spreading. Rach Hashem. 100%. I do have a question about that because um, the, the concept of changing is changing the nefesh behemis. So the nefesh behemis do need to be changed. It's not. It does not need to be uncovered. So that's that's the whole that's the whole uh, purpose of the tanya to change the nefesh behemis. So I do understand to uncover the essence, like chelik elokamimal mamash. Like this is who we really are, but the but the change do need to happen to the nefesh behemis. So where where does right. changing, so it's not just that's such a good point. Well, changing. Yeah, yeah. Right. For sure. Because I was struggling with that. So I'll 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 touch on it now, but it definitely will come up later in more detail. But <clears throat> basically. Miriam talks about the, I'm trying to think how to answer this. There's two ways I can do it. Let's say first, let's say first you imagine a wild animal and you 
you're trying to direct this animal, you're the owner. You want it to, to come with you, walk a certain way, a certain direction. Two ways to deal with it. You can either have it chained with, you know, it can be like a wild lion and it's, you know, really doesn't want to do what you want it to do. So you're trying to pull it this way, you're trying to drag it, you're trying to force it to come with you with chains. You're not going to win. It's a wild animal. Then you have the other approach. And what's this approach is with this animal, it's an animal. It has an instinct to survive. It has the natural passions and desires. The base of it is to exist. It wants survival. So what do you do? In front of it, you show it what it wants. This is going to give you life. This is going to give you, you know, this is going to make you feel amazing. This is, this is Hashem. This is the truth. He's the one that's your source. He's where you're going to get um, your safety and security from. You know, you dangle it in front of Hashem. I mean, in front of um, the animal, right? And so the animal starts to understand, oh, I, I want that. So I'm, I'm going to want to come to it, right? So that's, that's one way of answering you. Um, but then your, 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 so, so the reason I started off with that is because the essence of like what the animal soul is, the Nefesh of Bahamas, is it's an animal, it's passion, it's base. It, it's just an amazing, powerful energy source full of, of just, absolute power now that if we're going to go into more detail of what spiritual makeup it is that it has both good and, and bad it's a neutral energy it's a neutral thing the nefesh of bahamas is not bad the thing is it's an animal right and this animal has been placed in a material world where it's learned from a young age as soon as you're born that if I'm crying and if I'm feeling upset, then I can have a lolly and I'll feel much better. Or if someone stepped on my toe and they didn't say sorry, then I can step on them back and I'll feel better. <laughs> you know. So there's this this material sort of um, self gratification that our animal soul is exposed to from the get go, right? And so what does this teach the animal soul? It teaches you have your natural urges, you are a powerful source. And this is how you make yourself feel good. This is how you get security, safety. As an animal, you want to ensure that you're, you'll be in survival. But when you have survival, says the Rebbe Rashab, when you have your safety assured, the next step is desires. You, you want to be indulging in things that make you feel good. So, you know, drugs, sex, money, food, uh, emotional, um, just everything, this whole world. That's the breeding ground. And so an animal soul is not a negative force. It's a, it's a miskana. It's like, poor baby, you, you really don't know. You've been so blinded, you know? You're just an animal. Like, how are you supposed to know any different? So what we're trying to do, yes, we're trying to cover its essence because its essence is good. It's just pure, powerful energy, right? So it's not that we want to change the animal soul because the animal soul is bad. No, the animal soul is like a child. He just needs to be taught, just needs to be redirected. And like we'll learn later on as well, like the reason that our godly soul comes down into this world is because it doesn't have this passion. It doesn't have this drive that the animal soul has, this powerful, powerful drive that sometimes causes us to do really bad things. It's not because the animal soul is bad. It's because of this amount of passion that it has. It's just not being directed. So what's the, the goal of the, the godly soul is to come down and give it direction. And what does it do through fusing together and leading it? It's able to experience a greater connection with Hashem that it never would have experienced before. Never, because it doesn't have that drive. Right? Right. So there's all holiness it's all goodness there is no like you know what i mean there's no like intensity there's no there's no innate negativity in us whatsoever does that kind of answer what you were asking kind of it's still this the questions still 
stands because that's the whole purpose of the Tanya, but I do understand now better where it refers to, like the essence of it rather than, so the essence of the animal soul needs to be revealed because the essence of the Nefesh Elokit is like, that's who we are for real. Right. But in order to, someone explained it, like you have, you have a Baba Gunosh bowl, uh, what's it called? Uh, I don't know what they're called. You know, the doll that sits in another doll that sits in another doll? Yeah. Uh, babushka. 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 So you have, you have the, you have your body mm -hmm. is the first Babushka. Inside the body is the animal soul. Inside the animal soul is the godly soul. Now, what happens if we want the essence of our soul to be expressed through our body into the world, it needs to be felt. It needs to have a refined place so that it can shine through. Otherwise, it's already being covered. It's so easy to be completely sealed off, right? right. So the idea, the idea of uncovering who we are is you know because we're, we are covered so we we need to learn to to get rid of all the the muck, murky things that are staining you know the next layer right so with the like the, you said the whole purpose of the tanya you were saying is to change our animal soul right no the purpose of the tanya is to direct our animal soul not change it it's just energy. It's like a lake. You know, you have, a, you have water that's coming down um, from, from, from a high place, from a mountain, wherever it is. You see water anywhere. If it's in one direction, it's always going to have somewhere to go, even if you put something in the way. It's just going to... Mm -hmm. Tanya... Yeah. We missed that. that last we, we missed your last sentence. Right. So, so when you have water, if you just see the nature of water is that it will in, be in constant motion, right? So even if it's heading in one direction and you put a barrier, it's going to easily just ride off in a different direction around it, right? So right. this, this water has to go somewhere. It's not just going to stop existing because there's nowhere for it to go. Same thing with the energy of our, with our soul, right? This energy, just like water, is coming. It's moving. And if it's not directed in a specific way, then it'll go around and it'll just keep flowing in the other direction. So what's the other direction? The other direction is the you know, the world that it finds itself in is material, self-gratification. That's the way that it's going to be heading. That's why it's important for us to learn Torah, to learn Tanya, to learn Hasidus, because it's not that we want to change our soul, it's that we want to direct it. Does that make sense? Yeah. As an added in there, water will always take the path of least resistance, which sounds like more that um, untamed animal soul perspective. Like you would be more likely to go to addictions as a coping mechanism if you don't know any other way. Wow, 100%. That's gonna be, that's, that's part of chapter one, Tanya, that we're actually gonna talk about much more. But everything you said, 100%, exactly. <laughs> the altar rubber says, <laughs> amazing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Beautiful. So is there any other questions or do you resonate with anything else that you want to share while we're here? Anybody? I'm just feeling like a sponge. I just have wanted to learn this and to know this in a in an intimate group is really fantastic. Thank you for letting me be here. <laughs> wow, I love that. Thank you so much for being here. What is this? Wow. I can tell you already, if you feel like a sponge, <laughs> 
your life is going to change. I've felt that also. I've experienced that. To be a sponge for Torah, to be a sponge, especially within this framework of CBGT and, and you know, the Tanya, that's, that's what you need. Absolute humility gives you a space to, to, to um, absorb and, like, refine your heart. It's amazing. It's amazing quality. Hold on to it. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's my absolute Thank pleasure. You for inviting me. Sure. <laughs> We're going to do this every week. Same time. Amazing. Okay. Baruch Hashem, yeah. Is it, yeah. Is it going to be Thank the you. same time as we? Yeah, yeah. I'll add you to the WhatsApp group. That will be great. Thank you. Yeah, then you can get the link. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been amazing hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you. I will send, I will post the recording. Um, I don't know if I can send the file because I think the file can be too heavy to, to send by email but everything should be on the recording. I won't edit it. Okay. okay. Yeah. You can send it through a website called We Transfer. I can send it to you. It's an online website that you can transfer really large files through, G through email. So I'll send it over to you. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody. Morning. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you all are. Bye. Bye. Bye.